Today on Real Ghost Stories Online, when a woman returns to her childhood home for the holidays, she ended up with the surprise of a lifetime. The one-on-one -on -one visit with a long-deceased grandfather. Was this a true paranormal encounter? or simply the longing of a granddaughter to reconnect with someone who no longer inhabits the earth. We hear that story and more today on an all-new edition of Real Ghost Stories Online. Welcome to Real Ghost Stories Online. Call in your real ghost story now at 855-853-4802 or write in at realghoststoriesonline.com. You are about to enter the world of the unknown, and quite possibly, the undead. This is Real Ghost Stories Online. That indeed it is. 855-853-4802 is our phone number at Real Ghost Stories Online to share your real ghost stories with us. We'd love to hear them. Of course, you can write in at realghoststoriesonline.com. And if you like the show, help keep us on the air, become an extra podcast person, and EPP, sign up at ghostpodcast.com or patreon.com slash real ghost stories. Get access to all the bonus episodes, advanced episodes, and more. It's Tony and Carol Hughes with you on today's episode. What's going on? Fran, how are you doing, Tony? <sighs> Just having my uh, my yearly uh, voice failure uh, episode where um, I yeah, have to... Yeah, last uh, week you were kind of bad, <clears throat> and then this week you're not any better. Yeah. And it's not COVID either. It's not. I was going to say, I think Robert Stack's emulated voice sounds better than mine. <laughs> when we played it on the last episode, me, and I'm like, Robert sounds a little more natural. <laughs> I mean, I would offer to read stories, but why when you have him? Exactly. Yeah, let's have I Robert. Mean, he sounds awesome. I was thinking when he was reading <clears throat> that intro, like, like, when if he was alive, that would cost you a lot of money. It would <laughs> to, to pay to pay Robert. Yeah, now we just have virtual Robert that uh, likes to show up uh, uh -huh. and say, "Hey, <laughs> I, uh, I I'm I'm very excited about that technology and and playing with it more this it. next year because there's a lot of other interesting voices I think we'll have uh, pop up. It's interesting to have them like and have conversations with each other too. That's um, another fun. Yeah, element. that's funny. Because you did that one night, not on the show. Yes. Just for my benefit only, because it was not anything for, it was not arable, but it was one of the funniest damn things ever. <laughs> it was. It was too nasty. <laughs> I don't even remember what it was, it was about, but I just remember I it, it was like, I just remember it was oh like, oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. You can't hear that. Like, I can't imagine Casey Kasem saying these things, but now I'll never get them out of my head. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, good times. But uh, 855-853-4802, our phone number at Real Ghost Stories Online. We're going to kick off the show with a caller. Hi, you are on the air. Hey, guys. You guys are awesome. I love your podcast. I've been binge listening. I recommend you guys to everyone. So let me begin with, my name is Brenda. I am from Tulare, California. And I believe me and my whole family are very spiritually sensitive. My sensitivity started before I was born. I know that sounds kind of crazy, but let me start with, as a little girl, I used to love, well, I still do. I love asking my parents to tell me stories of uh, when they were growing up in Mexico and how they came over here, how they met, you know, everything. I, I loved hearing their stories. And keep in mind that I will be jumping a little around but it all makes sense at the end so a couple years ago i went over to visit my parents after work i was sitting down with my mom and talking and i brought up my co-worker who made me laugh and how i thought it was funny that she told me that people with blood type o negative are descendants of the gods and I have blood type O negative, so I was laughing. I was like, haha, mom, like, I'm from the gods. And my mom turns and looks at me and kind of chuckles and goes, and she's like, and then I looked at her and I was like, what do you mean? That's kind of odd. She's like, well, when you were little, you used to like me telling you stories. And one day I didn't have anything to tell you, so I told you, like, oh, I can't think of anything. And then you looked at me and you were about two years old and you said, well, I'll tell you a story, Mom. And that's when you went on to say that you were an angel 
without wings and that you chose me and since you didn't have wings you fell and you chose me to be your mom and I was like I laughed and I said oh well then I guess I am from the gods huh mom and she like kind of laughed about it and we kind of brushed it off and that's kind of one of the funny little ones that happened when I was little there is a lot more there it's even one story that happened when I was in my mom's womb and I can call back and talk about that one later so this next one that I'm going to talk about is another one with me and my mom it's kind of crazy it happened when I was in seventh grade um it was just another day like any other day I went to bed around 10 p.m my mom and brother were still up they were watching a scary show in the living room and it was about 11 gonna be 12 ish when they heard me open the door to my room they didn't pay much attention to it till i walked up to my mom and i started mumbling to her so then they turned to look at me and my mom was like what did you say and she said that i looked at her and i mumbled some more and in that she said well my mind went to well i gotta snap her out of this so she said that she was gonna reach over and grab me by the arms and kind of shake me when my brother stopped her and said no you can't wake a sleep a sleepwalker that's dangerous so then my mom said oh and she's like well maybe she's thirsty and that's why she's sleepwalking so she walks me over gives me a a glass of water not a glass but a cup of water and goes and lays me back down and sets the cup next to my um, counter and walks away and goes back to the living room to keep watching her show and at that time my brother decided to call it a night and went to his room so then she said she was watching the show and she heard my room the door open again so then she glanced over and she saw me walking back up to her she then said oh well I guess I gave her water so maybe she needs to use the restroom so then she walked me over to the restroom and she said that I walked right out and just went directly to the living room and she then went and got me and went took me back to my room laid me back down she then said, keep in the living room because I can't let her sleepwalk out of here. And just keep in mind, this was my first time sleepwalking because I have no history of sleepwalking. So she then went back to finish her show. And as she's watching her show, she hears the phone ring. And keep in mind, by this time, it's probably already like one-ish. And the phone is ringing. She tries to answer it as fast as she can. Since there was a landline, it was really loud because we had, I want to say, like two other phones in the house. So they all rang at the same time. So she went and answered it and she was like, hello. And then she said she heard a man's voice that sounded like my dad say, hey, open the door. I'm outside. And my mom was like, who is this? And the guy was like, you know who I am? Just open the door. And my mom was like, what? well what the heck like my husband's asleep in in our room and my sons are asleep in their room so then she got up and as this guy is like telling her to open the door she's glancing in the rooms and seeing that everyone's in their room and she says no who are you like i don't know you and the man's like you know who i am just open the door and as he says that my brother had gotten woken up when she glanced in his room and heard her talking so he heard the man's voice and got the phone away from my mom sorry got took the phone away from my mom and um the man was like open the door and starts laughing and my brother starts like getting really like rowdy and like yelling at the guy like who are you like cussing at him and the guy starts laughing and his laugh my mom said it's still in her head like it sounded like bat screeching and my brother was like what the heck and so my brother was like just lit up angry gonna open the door to try to fight apparently this man 
And in that, my mom snapped out of it and like slams her body against the door before he could open it. Looks at my brother and says, you're gonna let him in. Keep in mind, I am Hispanic, so my mom was speaking Spanish. She looks at my brother and says, you're gonna let the enemy in, which means enemigo in Spanish. And she was referring to the devil, meaning that is in, that is not a human person outside. And as she said this, the guy is listening to her on the phone and starts laughing harder. And it sounds like hundreds of hundreds of bats screeching. And my brother hung up the phone. And how in the world they were able to go back to sleep after this is beyond me, but they did. And the next morning, I woke up sweating. And I... I go run over to my mom and I was like, mom, like I had a nightmare. It was very like scary. Um, and she was like, what happened? And I was like, well, it wasn't really like a nightmare, like nightmare, but she was like, okay, well, just tell me what happened. And I said, we were in, well, I was in the forest and the trees were lit up with pictures of us and of like what we've done and like memories. And they all had their own little spotlight and they all suddenly just, shut off and it was pitch black and then slowly in like a pattern they started lining up again and the pictures were all turning into the devil's face and the devil was telling me that he needed me and that I was special and that he would give me anything he wanted if I would just go with him and I yelled at him and I said no I will not be going with you I have one God and he's my God and you're not my God and I was running down to the end of the the path so it was like a straight path um that I was walking through the woods where the, the trees were all lined up and it was all his face and the, the devil kept begging me that he needed me he needed me and I got to the light and when I got to the light is when I woke up sweating and then my mom looks at me and her face looks like she saw a ghost after I told her the story and she goes you don't remember and I was like I was like, remember what? And she's like, you were sleepwalking last night. And I was like, I was sleepwalking. And she's like, yeah. And she told me what happened. And then she told me about the call. And I was like, oh my gosh. Like one, put two and two together. I was like, mom, I think I was trying to warn you not to open the door. And that's why I kept waking up and mumbling to you. And then she, she was like, oh my goodness. And I was like, yep. Which, I'm sorry if this sounds like super poorly told, but that's just one of the crazy things that's happened to me. Again, I said I have like millions of stories, like so, so many that it would take days upon days upon days to tell you everything because I am very, very, very spiritually sensitive. Um... But those are just two of the really, one really kind of funny and cute. And the last one that I just told, that one's kind of, it's still kind of crazy to me to think that I, I never sleepwalked. And I sleepwalked the day that my mom gets this crazy call. And just the fact that at the end, she even said it herself, that she, she knew that that was, well, in her words, the devil outside, the enemy. And I, w she's like, you were trying to warn me not to open the door. So crazy. Well, I can call back with more stories if you. Um, thank you guys, and I love your podcast. Thank you for sharing that story with us. It's always comforting when mom's like, "That's the devil outside, honey." Yeah, no big deal. Yep. I had kind of a little hard time. I'm following that story. Mm -hmm. um, I just thought it was creepy AF that the phone would ring and there's some guy on the phone saying, open the door. I'm right outside. <laughs> like that, like that's creepy stuff. Yeah. You know, and like there shouldn't even be a consideration of opening the door that's just right out of a scary movie sort of thing i think it, 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 there's a scary movie based on that <laughs> i think there's probably several or 50 yeah 
but you know, so I just had kind of a hard time following how that all went together. Um, because, <clears throat> cause she was sleepwalking and then that yeah. happened and that, and she, there was a warning in there. Mm -hmm. I, I'm sorry. I I'm think kind she, of it was, it was the correlation of getting that call, that experience and then her sleepwalking that exact same night. Like, why did the these two rather random, spooky, See, and scary things happen? I don't find happen? that surprising. Like, because sleepwalking's weird. Sure. And sleepwalking, really, if you've ever been around anyone, you're not the sleepwalker. It's kind of spooky. Yeah. To see somebody sleepwalking. So I think I don't think sleepwalking itself is that unusual, but it's spooky. It is. Because like it's like they're in. Like, it's, I don't know. It's like they're possessed or something because mm -hmm. they're doing things and they're in like this zombie kind of state. Sure. So, yeah, that's creepy in itself. And then to get a phone call, mm -hmm. you know, the about the same time, all that's creepy. It is. Super creepy. It now, is. do I think it was, dem you know, the devil outside or would I be saying that to my kids? Yeah. I don't know. Maybe if I, you know, was scared shitless scar and children? that came out, then it would have come out. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I think it's just one of those, you know, I, I think devil almost probably uh, is a catch-all phrase, or maybe not. It's like not Satan himself hanging out outside, but something dark, something evil. And I think they were Hispanic and, mm -hmm. you know, and probably very, very, very Catholic. That's just a guess. And so I could see mm -hmm. mom saying something like that. Yeah, I've heard that like, exact same phrase uh, from, you know, the elders and such where someone's in that situation. And it's, you know, someone who, who grew up, uh, you know, and and were told these things and, and heard these stories and had, you know, somewhat similar things happen in childhood. You, you're you referencing, you know, what you know. And all that happened, like, I think she says like <laughs> one in the morning when the phone rang or something like that. Mm -hmm. Like it was really late. Yeah. So, yeah, that's a very freaky combination of things. Mm -hmm. And who knows, you know, the caller, the sleep, was it all connected? I don't know. Yeah. Hard to say. But, you know, listening to the story, she said she has zillions of experiences. I'd love to hear more. So my guess is, you know, I don't know. Because if she's not, you know, she's... um has very active um, interactions with the paranormal, mm -hmm. then that's different. Yeah. Yeah. The that, creepy, creepy story. It is. Thank you for sharing that with us. 855-853-4802 uh, is our phone number at Real Ghost Stories Online. Let's go to a letter. It says, my story is based in Finland where I grew up. I was brought up by my granddad, whom I lived with until I was eight years old. From then on, I moved to live with my aunt. Her husband and kids, the house next door. I remained close with my granddad until he died. And even moved back to live with him in my teens for a year. When I broke up with my first boyfriend, whom I lived with, and couldn't go back to my aunt's house after the breakup, my granddad died when I was 21, a few months after I moved to London. And the story takes place during one of my visits to the family house during the Christmas after his death. I was lying in bed trying to fall asleep in my old room. The door was open to the hallway and everyone else had been asleep for a while already. The whole house was dark with all the lights switched off, but the outside lamp and the front porch had been left on. As my room's window was facing the front porch. The light shone right through the slightly cracked open curtains, straight into the bed and on my face, which was positioned opposite the window at the other end of the room. I was tired, kept shuffling, trying to find the best position to fall asleep, but the light bothered me. Even when turning my face towards the wall, I kept debating in my head whether I should walk across the hallway to the front door or shut off the light or get up and close the curtains. But it was too cold and I was too cozy in my bed to get out. I wished that the light would switch itself off or the bulb to burn out so I would be able to fall asleep without having to do anything. And suddenly, it did. It freaked me out at first. I didn't hear anyone walking across the hallway to switch it off. Remember, my room's door was open, so I wouldn't have heard anyone walking in the hallway. Also, 
I didn't see or hear anyone switching it off from the outside, as I had direct view through the window to the porch and the lamp from my bed. The lamp wasn't one of those automatic outdoor lights that switches itself off, but had two manual light switches, one inside the hallway, the other outside on the porch next to the front door. After a while, I figured the bulb must have just burned out. That was the only explanation for the lamp to switch off. Next morning at the breakfast table, I told my stepdad that the porch light bulb would need to be replaced as it burnt out during the night. He went to the porch to press the light switch to test the bulb, and it came back telling me, bulb's fine, just switched it on, it's working okay. Asked if anyone had switched the light off during the night, but no one fessed up and simply said they were all fast asleep all night. During another night, same room, same setup, had left the room door open to the hallway. I was again shuffling on my bed trying to fall asleep when suddenly my granddad's old wound up chess clock, sitting on the bookshelf in the hallway next to my room, started to tick by itself. The clock doesn't have batteries, only works once it's been manually wound by hand, and as no one had touched or wound the clock since Granddad had died, which was a couple of years ago at that time, there was no explanation at all as to how the clock would have started ticking by itself. I still cannot explain how these happened, so I believe them to be my Granddad coming to say goodbye in his own way. <clears throat> Thoughts on that? That was creepy, too. Mm -hmm. But I do like the idea of it being her granddad saying goodbye. Mm -hmm. You know? Because it would be scary, but maybe at that time you also felt that feeling and that love, and maybe it wasn't scary. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's... And, and, like, those are, as you well know, those are the stories that just really get me. Mm -hmm. I just love stories like that. Because, what I mean... It's one of those things, like, is that a coincidence that happened? Or the devil. Or the devil or grandpa. I mean, it's those three. Yeah, you gotta, like, check a box. I'm going with grandpa. I'm going with grandpa possessed by the devil. <laughs> that wasn't an option, but whatever. <laughs> Combining A and B. Okay, I didn't give you any rules, so I guess you can. Grandpa's back. He starts out real nice, just offering you a Werther's original on the porch as you watch the sunrise <laughs> over the meadows. <laughs> it's like, mm -mm, thank you, Grandpa, for this Werther's original. And then suddenly, no reason, unless you're around, suddenly it starts to melt away in your mouth, and you realize, wait a second, there's something inside this Werther's original, and you discover Grandpa hid the corpse of a centipede deep inside that Werther's original. <laughs> He starts cackling, laughing excitedly as you slowly try to get the pieces of this decrepit centipede out of your mouth while still enjoying the caramely goodness of that Werther's original on a nice, soft summer morning. <laughs> Grandpa starts laughing so hard, blood starts coming out of his mouth and slowly it's dripping down his cheeks, but he just continues to cackle and laugh as you hurl What's left of the Werther's original at his face? It's with centipede. His jaw falls to the ground as the Werther just lightly taps his chin. How did this happen? Slowly his skin starts to melt away. And it's not Grandpa at all. It's Satan, Grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> but, to your surprise, he offers you a second Werther's original from his cold, dead hands. And you say, I can't resist the Carmelly goodness, especially on this warm <laughs> summer morning. Grandma comes out with lemonade, looks at her husband and says, oh, he's doing that devil thing again. Everybody has a good laugh, enjoys the lemonade, <laughs> and spends it sitting on the porch, Grandpa, watching the pasture and the animals at play. Until flies eventually land all over Grandpa, the scent can't be masked anymore by Old Spice. And eventually, he turns to you and says, You were adopted. <laughs> what the heck? I don't know. <laughs> 
I didn't see that one coming at all. <laughs> but he still has a big bag of Werther's original. And you have another one and go, that's okay. I never cared anyhow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was funny. That's, uh, there's the setting for a new Werther's app. I just never know where your <laughs> brain's going. I, I didn't just know where that don't. was going either. I just kind of... Just kind of kept going with it. Let's uh, let's go to a caller. Hi, it's your ghost story. Hi, Tony. My name's Skyler. Um, I was calling in to talk about some experiences that I've had. Um, the first one was when I was 16. Um, I was staying the night at my grandparents' house, and I'm a very lucid sleeper. And for those um, listeners who don't know what lucid sleeping is, it's where you're completely conscious in a dreaming state, so you have complete control over your body and your thoughts. Um, and so I know that I wasn't having a nightmare. I don't remember what I was dreaming about this night, but I know that it wasn't a nightmare. Um, but I'm in my grandma's spare bedroom, and my grandma's on a respirator, when she, and uh, I was, I remember going to bed and waking up in the middle of the night in a complete panic state. Like I'm trying to get out of my sheets and blankets and I feel like I'm on fire, but at the same time, I'm not sweating. I'm completely cold. I don't know what's going on. And the only thing going through my head, it's like a broken record playing in my head is I got to save her. I got to save her. And, you know, at a certain point, I couldn't move my body at all. And I'm sitting there thinking, I've got to save her. And I'm breathing heavy and I'm freaking out. And once I finally break that not being able to move, it feels like my body's made of lead. And I very weakly sit up in my bed and stand up and I shuffle to the door because my legs are so heavy that I can barely move them. And as soon as, in the entire time I hear in my head, I need to save her, I need to save her. And I break through the threshold of the door of the room and I'm fine. I could breathe again, my thoughts were my own. I no longer feel hot and I peek in my grandma's room and she's sleeping peacefully as can be. And deep down, I don't know what happened, but I think something was in my grandma's house and it had control over my body. I wouldn't quite call it possession, but I believe that something had control over my body that wasn't me. And uh, skip forward a few years and I'm and I work in a hospital. It's now a clinic. We used to do a hospital, the morgue and operating uh, an OR and everything. And I'm sitting there on duty one night, like 11 o'clock, just me, and we have two sets of sliding doors coming into the clinic about four or five feet apart. And just the inside door is open out of nowhere. And I can't explain it, don't know why, but skip forward another couple weeks, and I'm doing my rounds on the second floor. I'm on duty again late at night, and I hear what sounds like something knocking on something with a claw hammer. And I stop at the top of the stairs and I backtrack three or four feet and I hear it again. And it stops actually. And then I start going back down the stairs and I hear it again. Something's beating on something with a hammer. And I start doing another round and I don't know what it is, but I keep hearing it throughout the clinic. Each time it sounds like it's right next to me, but I'm in different parts of the clinic. And then I go back to the barracks and I'm sitting there alone in the barracks. And it sounds like there's somebody talking out in the hallway. Now, these are very heavy doors. So if someone opened the door and shut it and went inside their room, you would hear it. But I hear someone talking in the hallway to a couple people. And I open the door and I look down the hallway and there's nobody. And I shut the door and I wait a few minutes and I hear someone talking and I open the door and there's nothing. Nothing out there. And I asked a couple people and I've had people tell me that they've been bruised in their sleep from being grabbed. I've heard people say that they were in the clinic and they've heard doorknobs jiggling while they were there by themselves. People have heard voices in the clinic um, that they thought was me on duty downstairs talking to somebody and they come down and there's nobody there but me and them. But they very distinctly heard uh, people having a conversation. So I don't know what's going on um, here at this base, but I believe that there are a few haunted spots at this base, and I don't know what happened at my grandma's house, but something definitely had control of my body that wasn't me. Um, thanks for taking the time, and if I 
share this message on uh, future podcasts. Um, I would appreciate hearing what you think. So what do you think of the idea of having something take over control of your body at your grandma's house? Well, I don't really like the idea of that happening. At your grandma's house or just in general? Just in general. Okay. It's just not a good thing. Okay. At your grandma's house, it'd be really weird. Um, I don't know. I've had dreams before where I felt like, you know, there's something attacking me. Mm Mm-hmm. But I've never had the feeling of something taking over my body. Mm-hmm. That would be a really strange, even if it's a dream, those dreams can be so different. Like the type of dream he's talking about isn't just like a regular dream where weird mm-hmm. shit happens. It's like a really intense, I, I would guess, rather terrifying. Yeah experience but that would be really strange to like not have control of your body it's like something else does that would be weird it's like i don't think i'd be able to sleep well for weeks after that because i'd be afraid it happened again yeah i I, very strange i I, I, yeah i it's I, i guess you know somewhat comparable to the situations when people are in sleep paralysis and it's like you can't, you have no control. Maybe it's not necessarily moving you, but you're also not moving. Um, but I would think it'd yeah, be it's even, like you're frozen. Uh, it'd be even scarier if you are in a situation where it feels like it is moving you, but you're not the one doing, um, you know, the moving. Like that's new. I have never really thought of that experience before. And I don't want that to ever happen to me because I, I would not like that. I think it's, it's a comforting um, thought as you're going to bed, you know? Oh, yeah. Just like, this is this the night that something's going to take over my body? Mm-hmm. That would be awesome. There is an antidote, though. There's a huge <laughs> antidote, though, for this. I don't know if you're aware of it, uh, but if you ever do feel something like that taking over your body, you have to ask it to release you, release me. And I that, asked Wilson Phillips to ask them. That's done simply <laughs> by Wilson turning on. Wilson Phillips could ask yes. them for me. That's all you got to do. release me. You turn on some Wilson Phillips and you ask the spirit to release you. And the power of Wilson Phillips harmonies <laughs> will release you. Mm. Look at those like, spirits go away. Oh, the demons, the, the demons the are running. Would be like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Listen to that. Wouldn't it be great those to harmonies like. harmonies are so tight. Oh my God. Here's a great idea. We should have like a tent revival and we'll pretend we're preachers and we'll hire Wilson Phillips and they'll just be singing Release Me in the background over and over as we exercise demons out of people. Wouldn't that be great? Who's up next? Come here. Come to the stage. Okay. Hands in the air. Did you really just think of that? Oh my God. I don't even have to do that. Spirit's gone. da 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 Where's the steaks? We got some of those at Petco earlier. Bring the steaks out. Yes. That little uh, garden snake there. Yeah. Ooh. Because tent revivals should be making. Listen revivals. to the Wilson. Wilson Phillips, everybody. Oh, Carney singing. Oh. China, yes. Release me. <laughs> there you go. Wilson Phillips will be performing at our revival ceremonies in uh, tents in farm fields throughout the Midwest this summer. uh, So for anyone who is currently experiencing that and we don't have the revival tent thing going on, hey, maybe you just loop that song. Well, I think if you have it going on right now, just constantly all night or night. Because the revivals are starting mid-summer, we do have to tell you to simply... You know, hold on. And uh, eventually, when we have the revivals and Wilson <laughs> Phillips is there, trust me, it will go away. With our be pea soup flying all around that tent at this moment because everybody's just going to be like exercising the shit out of them. And it'll look really freaky and scary. But at the very end, when the camera pans up from showing everybody in pain, there's hold on for one more day. Wilson Phillips still singing. <laughs> And just carrying on as if nothing happened. (laughs) (laughs) We have some planning to do. (laughs) 
<laughs> we can't forget to bring the pea soup. That will be a very good prop. It will be. It really, it's going to sell it. You need the pea soup. Otherwise, you're going to be like, nah. get those big industrial ones so you can get it at Sam's. <laughs> I tell you, every time I see pea soup, I think of Linda Blair because no? she came to the radio station one time and that's what she was signing was cans of pea soup. <laughs> Are you serious? That's <laughs> Whoever was on there at that time was having her sign cans of pea soup. <laughs> oh. Yeah, and why? Why didn't I get one? I was there. She was like my size. She's tiny little. I mean, yeah. like I'm only five foot two. Yeah, but she was just a tiny little thing. Harper got and, a uh, a Linda Blair Exorcist doll for Christmas. What? Like an action figure that is uh, the ex like in, you know in the state of like her being possessed. Is it a new thing or was that around like way back when the movie no. came out? It's like Did if you find it, it on eBay? No, if you go to like like the back of like Target in the electronics area, they have all these like themed figures of like movies. Like I have a Chevy Chase one I bought too, where he's a Christmas vacation. But there was also the Exorcist one. And it was actually the first Christmas present I bought for Harper this year. I saw it in like November. I'm like, oh, oh my God, I just found it online. Yeah. I'm checking it out. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. We're hiding it around She's the house super now. Creepy. So yeah. instead of Elf on a shelf, it's Linda Blair on it. Well, it's Reagan on a shelf. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, Blair on a bench. And it's signed and yet, Sweet yeah. Dreams, Linda Blair. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, it's creepy. But we've been kind of putting it in different, uh, you know, different uh, like bouquets and stuff around the house. There's Linda Blair just uh, poking up behind the daisies. Oh, so. That's a creepy ass doll. I would not oh. want that one in my house. Happy holidays. And the thing is, here's the funny part. Uh, on uh, on the day after Christmas, Harper was going around. I can't find my exorcist doll. <laughs> so she was almost kind of wondering, did it move on its own? So. I I honestly, after looking at this creepy ass doll, I would not want it in my house. No, but you know, there's, when we were wondering for a little bit, we're like, where you know, is, where's the doll? There's one that's a Toonie Terrors one. It's a smaller one. Mm -hmm. Then there's the one that's bigger. That's like pretty pricey. We, uh, we, we were walking around and we we're like, oh my God, I think the doll may have moved. So you know what we did? on Wilson Phillips <laughs> and sage the house listening please to Wilson. Just bring the, please just bring the doll back. And suddenly please. it just fell from the ceiling. Wilson Phillips. There it was. It was like, all right, Wilson Phillips exercised our house. So it was a, it was a Merry Christmas. <laughs> it's a creepy looking doll. It is. You can have it at your house. I don't want it at my house. It's great. I love it. All right. That's going to wrap. There's another creepy thing in my house in my garage right now. I have this old baby carriage from like 1900 uh, and it's I have it out at Halloween, but I haven't put it anywhere else yet. So it just kind of sits in there and it's really kind of creepy. Yeah. And that's one that I told you I wouldn't put anywhere yep. near my house. And you said you were going to put it in your building. I was. I was. Some, some building. Now it sits in the garage. We put a Ouija board on top of it and we play. And it's and like, you put Linda Blair in there, <laughs> Linda Blair, little Reagan to bed at night in her covers that will levitate over her. And worst of all, every time we're doing it, we're cranking up the Wilson Phillips. Yeah, that's just it's what that we, keeps it all cool. <laughs> exactly. Uh, that's uh, that's what we got going on here. All right, that's going to wrap up today's episode of Real Ghost Stories Online. If you guys like the show. Keep us on the air. Become an extra podcast person. Sign up at ghostpodcast.com or patreon.com slash real ghost stories. We greatly appreciate that. Get access to all the extras. All of it's commercial free. Thank you in advance for that. Patreon.com slash real ghost stories or ghostpodcast.com. Until next time for Carol, I'm Tony. Thanks for listening to Real Ghost Stories Online.